In Rebel 3, we have a slew of new features that are going to help us to modify the color and contrast and several other things while we're painting or at the end of the painting process when we're trying to tidy things up. We can find all of them over here under the filter menu. And you can see we have a number of different filters available to us. We're gonna cover all of them. But before I get into that, I wanna talk a bit about how filters work. And the reason why is because I have a document here that's going to be very useful for demonstrating this. This document has three layers for the artwork. So you can see I have a branch layer, I can turn on and off. I have a bird layer I can turn on and off. And I have layer eight, which is going to be the background. Because these elements are isolated, I can actually affect them individually using these filters because the filter will only affect the selected layer. So if I only want to affect branch, then that's the one I would choose. If I want to affect bird, that's the one I would choose. Now, in addition to that, we also have the ability to isolate the elements of whatever it is that we're affecting, meaning that if I were to affect layer eight, and I were to want to isolate a certain part of this, I can do that via a selection. So we have a selection tool over here. I'm gonna go ahead and drag out a selection. And then I'm just gonna click off to make this an active selection. I'm gonna come up here to filter, choose brightness contrast. And as soon as I begin to modify the sliders here, you can see that we're only affecting the area within the selection. If I hit cancel and I do a control D to deselect that, and I come over here to filter and I choose brightness contrast and I adjust the slider similarly, you can see now we're affecting the entire layer. So I'm gonna hit cancel. It's important to note, however, that it only works with the selection tools. The masking fluid layers and the stencils do not have the same isolating impact. So you can have a masking fluid layer active and you can have a stencil active. Neither one of them will isolate parts of the layers. Only the selection tools do that. So that's an important thing to know. Now that said, I wanna go ahead and just affect the entirety of the background here because we're gonna go ahead and look at the first filter, which is the brightness contrast. You can see the brightness contrast has two sliders. You can see the first one is going to be brightness. So this would obviously affect the overall brightness of the background. So if I wanted the background to be a bit darker, and maybe I wanna reduce the contrast so that everything is a little bit less bold in the background, I could easily do that. I could also increase the contrast. So we're gonna have darker darks and lighter lights. And of course I can modify the brightness until I get exactly the effect that I want. Once I'm happy with the effect that I have, I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. If I'm not happy and I wanna reset back to the defaults, so I hit reset. I can also choose to cancel or click the X. Either one of those will take me out of that particular filter. So that said, we're gonna go ahead and spend the next couple of videos going through several of these filters, just like we just got done doing. And we're gonna isolate each and every one of them and understand the best ways to use them in terms of how you might apply them to a painting like this.